All right, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, gentlemen and generals, for being with us this afternoon. Um, and uh, it's an honor to serve on the Armed Services Committee. My father served for 28 years in the United States military. I have many family that are serving and are active duty today. So I appreciate your time and your commitment to your, our country and to our questions today. Um, I've been deeply concerned about um, what's been going on is watching the invasion of Russia and Ukraine, watching China line up with Russia as well, and, and looking at some of the technology advances that have been happening over the last not just a couple of months, but also a couple of years in cybersecurity and in AI. And would just like to ask you generally your thoughts on seeing some of the technology advances. My sense is, and, and whether or not too that we are ready, we have the resources financially to support what's going on within DOD with regards to cyber and the advances we're seeing in AI. Because my sense of it is that this is gonna happen so fast. And we're seeing advances uh, quickly and swiftly in ways that we've never seen before, I even could even imagine. And I'm, I, my sense is that DOD and the Pentagon, they're going to, you all be, will, will be the most, um, I think, prepared for the future in technology with regards to our defenses and even offense. But I am worried about China and what they're doing and their investment in AI and other technologies. And wanted to get your sense too of, of the technological resources that we have, the partnering with private industry and, and within the DOD and, and how you see that moving forward. How do we stay ahead of China? How do we learn from what, you know, the war in Ukraine and Russia's invasion and sort of this new battlefront? I'm curious to sort of get your thoughts on some of that too today. I uh, certainly share your concern uh, on, you know, in terms of our ability to not only keep pace, but stay ahead of uh, advancements. And that's why we're investing, we're asking to invest $145 billion into our DT&E, uh, some $13 billion uh, into, uh, uh, into cyber, uh, which will, I think is, is critical. Uh, in, and also, the investments that we're making, we're, we're looking to invest uh, $1.8 billion uh, into AI, and that's, it's things like that, to your point, that uh, will give us, will help us maintain a competitive edge. Now, we're not just doing things by ourselves, but we're working with allies and partners as well. And one of the benefits that AUKUS brings uh, is that uh, it enables us to not only work on conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines with our allies, but we're also working on other things like uh, long-range fires, hypersonics, uh, AI, and, uh, and those kinds of things. And, and so working together with our allies and partners, I think, is key. Uh, and that, that creates, that'll magnify our efforts uh, going forward. So they, and some of those countries have great capability. So. Congresswoman, I, I would say you're exactly right. Time is key here, a sense of urgency is key. And, and I try to mention that in my opening statement, the Secretary mentioned it. Uh, it's so important. I, in terms of time, I think we're probably inside of 10, maybe we have 15, I don't think so. I think it's probably in around 10, 10 years. Now, the key technologies, precision guided munitions, mm -hmm. they've been around for 30, 40 years. You combine that with the ability to see, we can see today like we've never been able to see in human history. Uh, combine that with the ability to crunch numbers, quantum computing, uh, artificial intelligence, and combine with robotics and about four or five, maybe six other really key technologies that are all converging in time and space. The nation state that maximizes those technologies with a way of war and optimizes them in the military is gonna have a decisive advantage in all the domains, space, cyber, land, sea, air. That's fundamental. Uh, this fight up, this budget, uh, is really critical to that, and maybe the next one. But this one has got to put us on the path uh, to really transform this military into that operating environment. If we fail to do so, we're going to be on the wrong side of the curve relative to China or Russia. Both of them have access to the same technologies we do. Mm -hmm. Whoever goes fast uh, and gets there first will have a decisive advantage, in my view. Right, and I, and, I, and I agree with that assessment, and I certainly don't want China eating our lunch in that regard, um, because it's important for us to lead and, and to win in that. Um, in terms of the budget and looking at that, in, and the resources, resources that we're investing there, are long-term or even short-term in the next five, 10 years, are we seeing you know, enough recruitment in this area to be able to fill some of the positions? Are we relying very heavily on, on private industry? Where's that balance of finding the right assets to help with and assist in, in that investment, those investments we're making? You, you mean? In Recruiting for the military, for some of those jobs. For the military? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you've heard us talk about recruiting a number of times a day, and this remains a, a, a point of uh, uh, 
focus for us. Uh, I, I truly believe that uh, based upon the things that we're doing, we're going to continue to uh, uh, recruit and retain uh, high quality people. And, uh, and again, the fact that we're working and leading the way in some of these advance, uh, advancements will, will help with the, in that regard. I think you know, young people want to work uh, with, with, with things like this, want to work in space and cyber. And, and so uh, I'm optimistic that we will be able to, uh, to recruit the right kinds of people. The gentlelady's time has expired.